Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Got a few more people just logging in right now. And uh, we'll have about one more minute, and then we'll go ahead and get started. It's a gorgeous day out there. Sun is shining. Birds are singing. Chris Van Bell wished snow on us. <laughs> You know I totally it. Blame you. I totally blame you. When I got up and saw that snow on the ground, I said, this is because uh, Chris wishes that we had snow, and now here it is. <laughs> I, I don't know if you see, like, on Facebook, anytime it snows and oh. it's, like, uh, what people think is out of season, I get tagged like crazy. <laughs> yes, I did notice that. It's because you like that snow stuff so much. So it's beautiful. Well, I don't have my tractor anymore, so... It's coming back with the lawn cutting stuff. I'm going to be in trouble. I can't shovel all this. <laughs> I hope we don't get a too big of a snow. I love it. I love it. All right. We've got a couple more people just logging in. And then we will get started. Well, I have to tell you, it was uh, very nice just hearing all the birds. I got up and watching all the bunnies and, you know, it's... Uh, if you have to be home, it's nice when you can see all that beautiful nature outside. Heck yeah. I like when the turkeys come out. I have seen an unusual amount of turkeys lately. I'm even hearing them in the woods behind us um, way more than I ever have. I, I prefer the turkeys to the coyotes, though, so uh, I'm good with that. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, I think last two to three years, the population's really exploded. It's kind of yeah. neat to watch. It is. I am. I've now got like five uh, bird feeders in the back and um, having my coffee in the morning and exploring all different kind of birds. It's actually kind of fun. Usually I'm rushing around so much I don't get to do that stuff. So I am kind of enjoying that. That's awesome. All right. So I know we've got just a couple more people logging in. If you're having any difficulty logging in, I've seen a couple people log in and then uh, log back out. If you're having any difficulty, please feel free to give our tech support a call. They will assist you um, in getting into the webinar so you can hear the audio and see the presentation. Uh, you can reach them at 248-247-1040. So again, if you're having any difficulty today logging in, uh, feel free to reach out to one of our fabulous techs and they will make sure that you get in and are able to hear the audio for today. We're going to cover a lot, so we probably should go ahead and uh, get started. I'd like to start off with some introductions. Uh, first, my name is Colleen Delang. I am on staff with my role source. A little bit about my background as I've also been a uh, licensed realtor now for gosh, 22 years. When I say that, it makes me feel very old. Um, so uh, I would also like to introduce uh, some other people that we have on the call. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce the my role source CEO, Dave Dries. Dave, can you say hi? Hi, good morning, everybody. I'd also like to introduce Chris Van Bell. Uh, Chris Van Bell is a realtor with Coldwell Banker Wormando. Chris, can you say hi? Tell us a little bit about you. Hey, everyone. Uh, I, I've been a realtor for about 10 years. Um, and then I'm also uh, your Gross Point Board of Realtors Macomb Chapter President. And uh, man, we're just having fun, even though we're all stuck at home, huh? It it's true. It's it's nice getting to at least reach out and chat with people and doing the Zoom calls and the go-to meeting webinars. So at least we can all stay connected through this difficult time. So um, where I think I'd like to start off today is obviously there's so much going on and everyone has so many questions. Um, so where I would like to start off today is I would like to have Dave sort of give us a recap of what's going on, uh, some of the rules, some of the guidelines that you're going to need to know. Um, and so Dave, you wanna take us into that? Sure, what uh, uh, Colleen's put on the screen for you right now is the uh, Michigan Association of Realtors uh, uh, takeaway on the governor's uh, stay at home order. Uh, basically what it says is that brokers and agents are uh, not essential and we're supposed to stay in our homes. We need to stay in our homes. It does say at the bottom of that uh, uh, paragraph that real estate activity that can be uh, conducted remotely is not prohibited. So that means anything that you can think of that you can do from your home, uh, you're allowed to do it. Uh, and that means business can still get done. And I think Colleen's going to show you 
that business is in fact still being done. Uh, another thing that the, she's just put up here, this is from the uh, Michigan Department of uh, Insurance and Finance uh, that expands uh, in more detail who is allowed to uh, leave their home to uh, do work. People that are essential include title companies, inspectors, appraisers, surveyors, register of deeds, and notaries. So all of those people are uh, considered essential and can uh, leave their home uh, to go do business. Uh, and then the uh, next sentence under that reminds us again that uh, real estate brokers and agents do not constitute critical infrastructure workers and thus may not leave their home for work. So uh, what Colleen's put together in this class is a from the beginning, getting a lead all the way through a closing, what can you do uh, currently in this environment under the governor's order that allows you to do business? How can you still do business? She's going to get into all that. I know a lot of people want to hear about the more of the showings and that aspect of it which is more in the middle of this class. So if you, you know, get uh, to the point where you're saying, well, I'm not seeing a thing about the showings, she's gonna get there. It'll be later in the class in about the middle of the class. So, uh, you know, just stick around and you'll you'll end up hearing that, uh, that part. Oh, and then she just put up there that uh, the Macomb County uh, Health Department uh, has shut down its inspections of, uh, well, uh, not well, uh, septic systems. So uh, if you have a property that is on a septic system in uh, Macomb County, that will uh, require you to put some language in a purchase agreement uh, about that, and this uh, talks about that. So uh, if you need to see that, you can get that from uh, the Macomb County Health Department. Hey, Dave, um, I've got the uh, map of data sharing. You want to say a couple of words about uh, where we are with that and the exciting uh, upcoming news we've got there while we have everybody yeah. on the call? Well, the big thing is we keep uh, uh, expanding our uh, data sharing, uh, especially in times of low inventory. It's good to make sure we have uh, as many listings as we can uh, to do business with. Uh, the pink ones on the left side of uh, Michigan, which are Mishrick, uh, are going to be added to our system uh, in the neighborhood of June 1st, probably around June 1st. So at that point, we'll have over uh, 30,000 uh, realtors will be able to see uh, your listing because of data sharing. And there's about 32,500 realtors in the state. So we're getting up around 93%. So it will keep working on it to try and get to 100%. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dave. So we're going to cover a lot of uh, information in this class, and uh, there are so many questions right now. Um, Dave and Chris are wait, actually going to be in. Wait, we, already have a, we already have a question. The okay. question is, is Macomb County not requiring septic inspections or just delaying them due to COVID? They're just delaying it. They didn't uh, say that uh, they're waiving it. They're not waiving it. They're saying that it will have to be done You'll have to account for that in your purchase agreement, and you may have to escrow money and, and things like that. If you need to uh, get more information about that, talk to your broker. Uh, your broker may have some policies about how they want that handled. But yeah, Macomb County is not waiving it. They're still going to require it. It's just they'll require it later once this uh, uh, governor's order is lifted. All right, good questions already. So please feel free if you have any questions to type them in that question box. Um, Chris and Dave are gonna man those questions. We know there's just a ton of questions right now. The biggest question is you have to decide, are you gonna look at this time where we're working remotely as a vacation or are you going to look at it as a time to still conduct business? Now, obviously we can't conduct business the same way that we have previously because we're all sheltering in, but I'm gonna show you today how to do a complete transaction from beginning to end right from your living room. So I'm gonna show you still how to work remotely. I'm seeing on Facebook so many agents saying, you know, I guess I'll just join a book club and I can't do anything and that's not true. We still uh, can conduct business, we just have to do it remotely. So uh, just as a matter of fact, you can probably see my screen at this point, Dave, 
Chris, can you guys see uh, that uh, screen right there, the Paragon screen? Yes, I sure Fantastic. can. Great. So if you take a look at this market monitor over here, let's just do a real quick check because um, business is still getting done. Just to reassure you, if I go back uh, three days, uh, I can see that there were 419 new listings added to the MLS. So there's still a lot of new listings coming on the market. And I know I personally am working with a lot of buyers who have been looking for quite some time due to this low inventory. So when a new house goes on the market, they get excited and they still want to write PAs. And we're gonna show you how you still can do that, how you still can write them in ways like subject to the buyer walking through the home when the governor's order is lifted. We're gonna show you some great ideas for doing that. Um, but you can also see that 180 listings had price changes. So it may have moved into your buyer's price range. And if you use the hot sheet, if you've never used it before, you can find it right under search. If I go into my hot sheet and I run a search of how many went pending, just in the last day, we have had 133 listings go pending. So business is still being conducted out there. Um, it's just we have to change the way that we're doing our business. So as Dave said, we're going to focus a lot on virtual open houses, virtual showings, um, what's the processes, what are the rules. But let's start, if you're just getting into the business, because we did have a couple new people that signed up, you can still prospect right from your living room as well. So one of the ways you want to do that is you want to start going right to your resources. Now, I'm going to cover a lot of information today, but don't worry. We have classes, webinar classes on each thing that I'm going to show you today. So if you're just interested in lead gen, we have a whole class on that. If you're just interested in doing a CMA remotely, we have classes on that right down to forms, everything that we're going to cover today. So if I go to my resources, where we're going to start today is market stats. We are going to do some prospecting. We're going to get some leads so that we can go through the entire transaction soup to nuts. So we're going to go into market stats. And what we're trying to do with market stats is we're trying to tell a story. The story I personally want to tell as an agent right now is why people should list their homes today why they shouldn't wait weeks down the road when they have all this competition, but why should you put your house on the market today? So I'm gonna tell the story by showing sellers right now that if they list their home, they're gonna get more for their home right now than they have in years. So the story that I'm trying to tell in uh, market stats here is I'm trying to tell why they're gonna get more and I'm gonna use the report that is price per square foot down here at the bottom. Now I'm not looking at the whole MLS area, I'm looking to really kind of focus in on certain areas to tell my story. Maybe I do a lot of work in Shelby Township. Uh, maybe you're uh, working in Sterling Heights quite a bit. Whatever your areas are, you can actually stack them up right here along the top. Uh, maybe I'm also gonna include Macomb uh, Township here. If you are specializing in, uh, let's say, waterfront, or you're specializing in a larger area, you can even draw your own area on a map so you can tell what's happening in just your specific target areas. Now, I remember when I got my license, uh, you know, way back 22 years ago, we would invest in those postcard mailers where you'd spend hundreds of dollars and create these big postcards and they would go right from the mailbox to the trash can. Well, now with social media, you can actually get all that information out um, and you can boost your post. I think it's as little as five dollars. So you can actually target a particular area and boost a post right to that area. But what I've got now is I've basically got the areas I want to tell the story for. Now I want to share this to social media. But before I do that, I really don't want to share this line graph because this doesn't tell a story to the consumer. I want something the consumer can look at and easily digest and see what's going on in their marketplace. So I'm going to change this from a line graph to a bar graph. You can change your time frames, you can do rolling quarters, and you can make it as detailed as you want. But what I'm showing the consumer right now is, wow, if you would have sold a couple years ago, you would have only got $133 price per square foot. Now you can get about $142. So the prices are going up and up and up. So now I want to post this to social media. So I'm going to simply hit the share button. And I like to post these as live graphs because I want them to be able to click on it and see interactive numbers. 
I want to post it onto my social media platforms. I'm just going to hit share. And what I want to do here is I just want to figure out where do I want to share this? There are, uh, as you can see, there's over 181 different places that you can share this to. But I'm just going to use one that we're all pretty familiar with these days, and that's Facebook. So I'm going to share this right to Facebook. And now I'm going to put in my call to action. So Inman studies show that the call to action should be between three and five sentences, and you want to give them a reason that they want to check out that information. So I would say something like sellers are getting more for their homes than they have in years. Um, do you want to know why? Either give me a call or click on the link below. So I'm giving them some information in my graph that I created, but I want to do something further. Not only do I want to give information, I want to capture their information. So I would encourage you to take some of the lead generation tools that you have. And by the way, all of these things are included in your My Real Source Benefits. Um, so right under resources, you're going to have all of these tools. Um, but I not only want to show them information, I want to capture information. So you may want to combine one or more of our lead generation products to not only show information, but get the lead back to you. So you have their address, their contact information, and you now can really put together a real CMA. By the way, you can also share this to a page that you manage. I can share this to my business page. I can share it maybe to um, a page that we send out through my office. Um, so again, you can actually change where you want to share this post to. The second hey, part of this, hey, yes. Tally, uh, before you leave the market stats part, the uh, market stats webinar uh, that was held yesterday was uploaded to uh, the YouTube channel. And if you let them know that they can go there to see that, so get more information about market stats. Absolutely. Um, and Dave brings up a really good point. Um, we record, we're recording this class today. We record each one of these webinar classes so that you can refer to it. Um, as a matter of fact, we've just put that under resources. Um, we want you to think of resources as your toolbox, by the way. That's where all of your tools are going to be located, all of your great products and services. Um, if you go under education, you will see recorded webinars, just like the one we're doing today. And as Dave mentioned, we had a great class yesterday on social media um, and, you know, using a lot of these products. So you will find those and the market stats class, you'll find those um, under the recorded webinars. So thanks, Dave. Um, so once you've got your post started, so now I've got my Facebook post started, I've got my graph created, I want the second piece of that. I want the capturing part. I not only want them to see the information, but I want to get their address, their contact information, their email. So in order to do that, if you go into your cloud CMA account, um, and a lot of people don't even know this is here, over in your cloud CMA account, right where your avatar is or your profile photo at the top here, if you go down to lead generation, you will find a landing page that is automatically created for you. There's nothing you have to do here, by the way. This is automatically done. If you want to take a look at it, you can click on view your landing page just to make sure all your information looks right. But what you want to do here is you want to copy the link. Because now when I'm getting ready to post my, my post, I not only want to show them something, but I want to put my call to action so that sellers are getting more. And then I want to post, uh, I want to have that link inserted here. So not only are they seeing information, but they're also getting a reason to click on that to find out what their home is worth. Okay, so I'm going to show you the actual finished product. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share this. And by the way, if you're a little nervous about sharing this, maybe this is your first time posting something like this, you can always change it uh, under your audience here. You can change it from friends to only you. So the very first time, if you're a little nervous about maybe making your first post, you can change it so only your eyes can view it. Let me show you um, though what that finished product is going to look like. And that way you can see 
how the whole capture and how the whole graph actually looks. So this is the finished product. So this is a post right in my Facebook account. And again, I would probably do this on my business page and I would probably boost this to my target uh, audience. So I'm gonna put this on my business page. And then if I'm showing a graph for maybe Sterling Heights, I'm gonna boost it maybe to that Sterling Heights area because that's the sellers I'm trying to advertise or the audience I'm trying to, to utilize. So right here, it says sellers are getting more for their homes due to extremely low inventory. Wanna know more details? Wanna know what your home is worth? Give me a call or just click the link below. So if they click into this graph here, that's gonna show them those interactive numbers so I can see what's going on in the marketplace. But then when they're ready to find out what their home is worth, they're gonna click on that capture piece and that's gonna basically take them right into my landing page. My landing page is gonna ask them to simply enter their address. It's going to quick fill right down here. As soon as I click on that magnifying glass, it's gonna say, oh great. So it's telling your Facebook audience that it's immediately found their home. It's gonna show them a little map of where they live and it's gonna ask them for their name. It's going to ask them for their email address. And if they want an even, if they want a couple comps that are even closer to their square footage, they can even type in their square footage. Now behind the scenes, let me explain what's happening. They did not get a number for their home. What they did just receive is a report with who I am, my resume, a little bit about me, and three or four local comps that are going to be close to their house that are just going to show them what they could find on places like Zillow or Realtor.com, other sold information. Immediately popping up on their screen, it's going to tell them they should give you a call for a more accurate valuation of the home. Here's my cell phone number. Here's my email address. What got sent to them behind the scenes is a nice little report about who I am, why they should choose me as their realtor. What I receive on my end is an email that tells me a new lead requested to know what their property is worth. Now I can follow up with that lead and I can put together a very comprehensive CMA that, that I now can go over with them. So there's your first piece is if you're getting started in the business and I know it may seem like it's a difficult time to get started, remember you can still do this prospecting right from your home. All right, so now you've got this lead who's contacted you. Now we have to go into the next piece. So how do we start um, doing some homework on this property? Because obviously we can't get in our car and drive over there as we did before. So there, the first thing I would recommend is going into Paragon uh, and checking out the tax information, checking out if there was any previous sales we can look at. So I'm gonna start off with typing in the address in my quick search up here. So I can see, oh, yep, the property is closed a couple of times. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up that closed sale. Now, really all I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to figure out what does their home look like? Because I can't drive over there. Is it a ranch? Is it a two-story? You know, what are we talking here? So I'm going into that previous sale record. This is where I wanna open up those photos. And now I kinda wanna get a layout. Now I can clearly see right from here, that I'm working with a brick ranch. So when I'm trying to pull my comps for a CMA, I can clearly see what's happening here. I can now go to the next photo. I can see it has a, uh, I can see clearly that's a two car garage. Uh, it is attached. So I'm starting to do my research, right? I'm looking at the kitchen. I can see it's got wood floors. I can see it's a pretty decent size. Again, those room measurements will probably be in there. So I'm just kind of getting a layout of what does this home look like? Okay, so as I'm going through more of the detail, like I can see here that there's a brick fireplace, it's got a hearth. Now, I'm not going in to steal these photos or anything. I don't want, uh, sometimes that question comes up, well, can I just take the photos from here? You know, yeah, you can put these photos in your CMA um, because it's going to pull them in as, as a comp or as maybe as a previous subject property, you can put those in. But I do not want to use these photos in my listing um, because how it works is whoever clicks the shutter of the photo actually owns the copyright. So I want to be very careful. 
these photos are not to be used in your listing when you get the listing. They're just for research purposes at this point, for researching it, researching in your CMA, things like that. I just want to know the layout of the home. Does it have a basement? How many bathrooms am I looking at? What are What's the shape of the home? So I'm kind of getting just a rough idea of what that home looked like. Now, of course, condition can change. And condition obviously plays a huge part in what the home uh, is going to sell for. And it's obviously playing a huge part in how long it's going to take to sell. Um, so we're going to factor that in, but we're going to do that with the seller's help. And I'm going to show you that in a few moments too. So I've now kind of gone through the previous sales. I can tell a little bit about the property. I want to use the remarks to figure out, you know, is it a, is it a gas fireplace? Is it, you know, tell me a little bit about the home. But now I want to go into the tax records. Now, there are two ways to get into the tax records. Of course, you can go up here to the tax icon, um, and that will allow you to go into BSNA or Real List so you can get that information. Brian, our, uh, our chief technical officer, he's done a fantastic job of really integrating all of that right into the listing itself. Um, and I love this. And by the way, one of your member benefits you get um, as being a My Real Source member is if you are searching on a property in Genesee County or Macomb County or any of the gross points, you get the BSNA, the trusted municipality record. You get those records at no cost when you're clicking through this quick action link that's attached to the listing. So many times you'll click on a property record and it will ask you, um, you know, uh, for two dollars or a dollar fifty for the property record that the municipality charges. What we do at My Real Sources, we actually pay that for you uh, when you use this quick action link and it's part of your My Real Source benefits. Um, I know myself, all those $2 add up at the end of the year um, when we're researching all these different properties. So keep in mind, if you go to that previous property sale, um, you will see, and I, I do apologize, uh, it kind of looks like a garbage can. It is supposed to be a government pillar. We, we keep yelling at Brian about that. He kind of squished that government pillar down to uh, what now looks like a garbage can. Um, it's not to delete the listing, I, I assure you. It's actually uh, the trusted way you're going to go in through BSNA. So I'm just going to click on that so you can see what happens. Instead of me having to go in and log into BSNA and possibly pay for that property record, I can actually click on that link. And what you see is it takes me right into BSNA, right into, in this case, it took me right into the city of Sterling Heights. And I now can, I could even use this image if I wanted to on my CMA. A lot of times I will do that. If I have not been to the property, and in this case, since we can't get in our car and drive over to the property, I will actually do a snapshot right of that front picture that I include. So on my CMA, I've got this pretty photo of their home. All right, so as I scroll through here, the BSNA record is going to tell you things like uh, many of the municipalities will show you if the water bill has been paid. Many will show you if there are assessments that the city has outstanding on a property. Um, as I'm going through here, I can see the owner of record. I can see previous sale information. I can see um, the SEV on the property. I can now tell what the lot size is. I can see here it's 60 is the frontage by 120. I can see things like the size of the garage. I can see if it was built on a basement. I can see in most cases if it went to sheriff sale. I can see the previous owners. Um, and as I scroll down again, it will tell me usually things about the fireplace. It'll tell me a, a lot of that detail. If it's built on a basement, uh, if the basement was finished. So a lot of that detail I'm able to pull directly from the BSNA record. Now, uh, Dave was the one who taught me this. Uh, if you ever got into a legal dispute and you had to go to court, this is the actual trusted record. This is what the judge is going to look at. And what we do versus many other MLSs, we use the live record, the live BSNA server. Um, and what that means is I, I actually had some clients who had an outstanding uh, property tax. They went into the city in the morning, they paid that property tax, and we were able to see that in the afternoon, so we were still able to close. Um, so the title company actually went in and we took this record and they said, yes, we can see that it has been paid. So um, many different MLSs, they will use a feed 
which means it doesn't get updated at maybe every 24 to 48 hours or however that however often that feed actually pulls in the information. By using the live BSNA server, if that assessor goes in and marks something paid, you can see that almost uh, immediately. And that makes a huge difference. So you wanna check uh, the, the closed sales within Paragon. You wanna check the BSNA record. Remember that's the trusted record. And then the other thing I like to do is I still like to go in and I like to check the realist record. Realist, by the way, is this little red quick action icon that you see right here. Um, they're both located together right underneath the uh, property information down here. The reason I like to check Realist as well is sometimes there are discrepancies. Um, and Realist is an aggregated uh, collection of information. So it's pulling some information from the municipality. It's pulling some information from the MLS, but it's pulling from different sources. Um, Realist just about a week ago got a facelift. Um, it now is much faster. Uh, it used to run off Adobe Flash, which just took a long time to open. It wasn't quite as convenient, um, but I will tell you, I really like the new look of Realist. As you can see, it's much easier to read. Um, it will also show you things like, I had a situation where the MLS record said it was two stories. Um, the municipality record said it was one story. Well, what had happened was um, the homeowner, and this happened to be in Sterling Heights as well, the homeowner actually put a second level on the home, put a dormer and um, a, a, a basically a second level on top of that home, but he never pulled a permit with the city. So the city's record said it was still one story, but clearly the pictures that I could see in the MLS were two. So a lot of times you will see in Realist, it will say MLS two, tax one. So you'll see things that maybe you need to ask questions about. So basically, it's just something that I would look at and I would say, OK, that's something I want to ask the seller about. You know, why does it have two different stories, one from the tax, one from the MLS? Um, as you're going through here, too, it'll show you things like um, if they refied. A lot of times you'll see even the refi here. If it went to sheriff sale, you'll see that. Um, so a lot of that information will be listed right underneath here, as well as all the mortgage history. OK, so I want to check. So really what I'm trying to do now is I'm just doing my homework. I'm trying to get as much information about the property because I can't get in my car and drive over there like I normally could. All right. So once we now have that done, we've got our tax information, we've done our homework. Now we want to present our CMA to the homeowner. Um, and I love cloud CMA. I think it's uh, very easy to present. Um, to the homeowner, especially if you're doing it over the phone, they have some interactive options. But before we can really do our full CMA, we've done our homework, we've gotten our, uh, our basics, but what about the condition of the property? So that homeowner obviously is going to be the only person that's in that home right now. So if I can't drive in my car over there, how do I see the condition of the property? How do I see what it looks like? Does it have, you know, 1970s wallpaper? I mean, what are we looking at inside? So by utilizing the seller to provide things like photos um, or to provide, if they are able, to provide a video tour with their phone. Um, and now we're not looking for quality, you know, top quality photos. What we are looking for is kind of a walkthrough so that we can use that to build our CMA. It's uh, asking most sellers today, they have a camera on their phone. So asking for some simple pictures. Um, if they do have a, uh, if they're pretty tech savvy, maybe asking them to just do a video through their home, walking through the home so you can kind of see what it looks like. That's going to help you determine the condition of the home. It's also, if they can send you photos, it's very helpful to include those photos in your CMA. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Um, so now we've gotten the photos from the seller. We've asked questions. We've called the seller and we said, okay, that, that second bathroom, is that in the basement? Or is that, you know, on the upper level? So we've asked our questions. We've gone through. The seller has given us some photos that we now can see the condition of the property. Now we've got to come up with the right price and we've got to show it in a nice, easy way because we're not sitting next to them. We need it to be very convenient for them and for us to go through it. In order to do that, I'm going to bounce back here to Paragon. And um, the hardest part of doing a CMA is really finding the right comps in Paragon. The CMA program itself is three simple
tabs um, and very, very easy. You can set it up one time and you don't really have to do much more than that. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm sorry, do we have a question? No. Okay. So I'm going to go into my search because what I want to do is I want to find those comparables. Obviously, if you're uh, looking at this home, I'm going to be looking for a brick ranch comparable with 1300 square feet. I got that from the BSNA record. Um, I don't want to compare that to a two story uh, colonial that has 5000 square feet. Right. I mean, we want to keep apples to apples. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to search by single family or residential condo. I didn't want to bore you and make you sit through me filling all these fields out. So I'm just going to pull open a saved search uh, that I already created. By the way, you can save searches for clients. You can pull up your previous searches that you may have done. But what I'm going to do just for the sake of time today is I'm just going to plop in some information real quick so that you don't have to see me type all these fields out. So I don't keep you here all day. All right. So what I've done is I've actually pulled up the closed status because obviously that's what I'm basing my numbers off of that's the most important we've got to have some close to tell them what the properties are closing for I'm a huge Floyd Wickman fan and uh, one of the things I learned very early on 22 years ago was if you're sitting with someone or in this case if you're talking to someone on the phone they know they're walking around their neighborhood they know what's for sale in their in their neighborhood and they also know you know they're talking to Joe Schmageggi and he says he got 150,000 I want to be able to show them that I am watching what's happening in their neighborhood and therefore I'm including all the actives the pendings and the closed now being that I'm a huge Floyd Wickman fan he also taught me one more thing and this is totally optional you don't have to if you don't want to um, but he always told me that homeowners are emotionally attached to their homes and that you should never tell them anything. You should show them everything on paper. He also told me a story about um, a seller who was emotionally attached to his home uh, and sellers say things like, you know, hey, Colleen, I know you think my home is worth this, but my home was built with golden nails. And so therefore, I think I should get so much more than you're saying. Well, sometimes it's showing them a good example of why they shouldn't overprice their home. So you may want to even include one overpriced expired that's been on the market for quite some time. I usually look for an overpriced expired that's been on the market for two or 300 days, because usually when they say, I know, Colleen, you want to list it for 300,000, but I think we should try 400,000. Um, I want to be able to, in my CMA, say, I know, Mr. Homeowner, your home is lovely. And Mr. Schmageggi on the corner, he felt just like you do. And look, he's been on the market 300 days actually adjusted his price four times. I want to be able to pull that out uh, in my CMA and point out why maybe we don't want to do that. Some other things we want to do when we're pulling our comps, we want to make sure that we're just pulling sales. We don't want to include all of those leases. We want to make sure we're putting in enough information that we're pulling like-minded comps. So in this case, I would do one story, which is going to be your ranch. Um, I've got uh, three bedrooms. It happens to be one and a half baths, so I'm doing one to two here. It is built on a basement. I could put in the garage. And remember, when you're trying to figure out square footage, don't be afraid to use the 20% rule. Um, all of my appraiser friends, especially in this area, have said, you know, that 20% rule is what we go by. And what that means is this home is 1,361 square feet. I take 20% added onto the top of that number, and then I take 20% and minus it off the bottom. That's going to be what most appraisers use. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you're working in rural areas, sometimes these rules don't apply. You, I just listed a home in Casco, and there was not another like home for miles around there. Um, so in that case, please take our Cloud CMA class. We will show you how to loosen those parameters how to put in uh, a little bit less criteria so you come up with more like, we'll show you some of the rules that you're gonna wanna use in doing rural areas, things like acreage. So that's a great reason alone to take the Cloud CMA class. Anyway, so I've got all my criteria in here now. The next big thing mm -hmm. is I wanna do what an appraiser is gonna do. I wanna stay within one mile of that subject property. So how do we do that? That's when we're gonna go into our map um, so there is a search by map field. And there's a couple little tricks here, and I like to 
Um, you know, I'm always in a hurry myself, so I don't play with all of these tools. So I like to kind of point them out when we do these classes so that the next time you're in a more difficult, doing a more difficult CMA, you can fall back on these. The first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to stay within one mile of my subject property. So what I did is I went up to this area where it says center map uh, on this address. And I typed in the address, comma, the city, and I hit the magnifying glass, which now presents this red X where my subject property is. The next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do what an appraiser is going to do. I went up to one mile, so I typed miles one, search radius, and that's how I came up with this blue circle. Now I'm staying within one mile of my subject property. Keep in mind, uh, if you see these clusters, it just means the homes are very close to one another. But if you click on either the flags or the little clusters there, you can actually scroll your way through to check out the comps that we're going to be using. All right. And um, another quick note that I did not know you could do, my friend uh, Lisa Harris, she's also a fantastic instructor at my role source. Um, you can also exclude an area in your CMA. So we're going to pretend for just a moment uh, that Lisa listed these five waterfront properties right here. Okay, we're going to pretend that this Dodge right. Park is yeah. actually. Yeah. Yes. They'll come up to you and then either pay them in cash or with the card. Should I do? Hello? Cash? Oh, are you on the phone? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> All right, so let's let's pretend for just a moment um, that we've got these five waterfront pr properties right here, and we don't want these waterfront properties in here because we're going to pretend that Lisa listed these, and these are like million-dollar homes. We got this little brick ranch off the water. Don't be afraid to exclude a particular area. So if we are going up to our drawing tools here, I can click on this little polygon, and I can say, you know what? I don't want to include those $5 million waterfront houses. I want to remove them from my search. You can draw a shape and then go to edit and exclude that shape. So what I just did is I just removed her million dollar waterfront homes from my CMA. Sometimes you'll find that that's very helpful if you're doing waterfront. You'll find that it's um, very helpful if you are doing maybe a subdivision where um, I'm thinking of a particular one off Hall Road that half of the sub is new construction, half of the sub is uh, older homes. So if I want to draw the distinction so I don't get a bunch of older homes in my CMA, I'm looking for more of the new construction homes, you can do it that way. So it's a really good way, good tool um, to be able to eliminate things that you don't want to have to go in and deselect. You don't want to have to go in and remove a bunch of properties. Okay. The other thing is I can't get in my car and drive over and see what the subdivision looks like. So I can't go in and see, does the subdivision need a little work? Uh, you know, what does it look like? Uh, so there is this little Google man and we see him all the time. Um, I've seen him in here a million times, but until recently, I've never really used him as much. There's a little Google man over to the right here. And how this works is if you drag that little Google man onto your map. And by the way, if you just hover over an area, it'll tell you exactly what address it's going to set him in front of. If I actually drag him over to my subdivision, I literally can walk down the street. I can see the neighbors to the left. I can see the neighbors to the right. I can do a 360 view. If I want to see the entire subdivision, this is really cool. I can actually walk right down the road. And by the way, if you're using our collab center or you're sending things to your clients out of Paragon, they can do this too. Because if they can't get in their homes, they might wanna check out the subdivision as well. So keep in mind that little Google man right over here to the right is really helpful when you're trying to check out the neighborhood and see what the neighborhood looks like. So I can see this is kind of a traditional brick ranch neighborhood. Um, and when you're ready to go back, you just hit the arrow and that's gonna take me back to my map. Now I want to go ahead and I want to run my search. Up here at the top of my search, you can see it's giving me just a breakdown of the numbers, but I have a little OCD. So if you know me, you know every towel in my closet is the same color, folded the exact same way, stacked in the exact perfect lines. So this looks like a mess to me. I never, I don't like the way it's sorted. So when you've got your search results, keep in mind you can click on that status and sort it just like an Excel spreadsheet. So now I'm looking at actives, closed, 
Now I can kind of see right up here for the price range, but maybe I'm going through these and I found a couple and I thought, nah, yeah, that really doesn't look quite like my subject property, or maybe that one needs a little more work. Um, so I'm gonna go through and I'm obviously going to open them. I wanna review them for the sake of our call today. I'm not gonna do that with each one, uh, but what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and grab a couple in our median price range here just so you don't have to see me open up each and every one. Now, I do recommend going in and, and making sure that you know they're in good shape. Uh, this particular home that I used as our example today, it was absolutely a dollhouse uh, from the outside. Every flower was planted in a nice straight row. But when I walked into the home, I kid you not, it actually had blue shag carpeting and those big 70s wallflowers you know, that stuck on the wall like the Brady Bunch. And I know they say it's coming back, but it ain't ever coming this far back, I assure you. So a lot of times that's why we need those seller photos. We need that walkthrough from the seller because we wanna see the condition of the property. So I've got my comparables that I now wanna bring into my cloud CMA account, but having OCD, this still looks messy to me. So remember, you can always go up and hit the checked box. I've now eliminated all the stuff I don't want to use, and I've got the comparables that I want to now send over to cloud. Now, back in the day when I got my license, you'd have to manually type in all those numbers, and my fingers are way too fat for that. So keep in mind, you can go right to the easy button now, and the easy button I'm referring to is located under actions. Um, please be careful here. There are a couple CMA options. Um, I'm only recommending you use cloud because there is the Paragon CMA. Um, I personally don't think it's as easy for the consumer. I think it's a lot of extra steps for me. So I don't want you to use that one. Um, I would like you to go all the way down to cloud CMA and you'll notice they even have a buyer tour. What that is for is if you were showing, let's say these were five active properties and you wanted to show those to a buyer, it'll put a nice little tour together and give them driving directions and lots of cool stuff. Uh, but in this case today, we want to do cloud CMA. We're going to click on that and that's going to take us right into the cloud program. Now, the cool thing is we don't have to type in all those MLS numbers. So right down here where you see my mouse, you're going to see all those have been imported for us. And all I have to do is give my report a name. So we're going to call this Sally Seller. Another cool thing Cloud recently added is if you start typing in your subject property, so I'm going to start typing in our 41539 Wessel, it will quick fill for you. But what it actually does is it goes out and grabs the tax information and it plugs in the square footage, the bedrooms, the bathrooms. It's pulling all of that data right in for you. Remember how I said if you just do a snapshot or you do maybe a snippet or capture, depending on what you're using for a computer, you can actually add in a cover photo. So you've got a nice front page. Um, if you don't, that's okay. What it will actually do for you is it will do a Google overhead shot for you. Um, so you'll still have something on your cover. It just might not look quite as nice as um, if you did an imported photo. Okay, so I've got my information here. I'm gonna go ahead and click Fetch Listings. And what that's gonna do is it's actually starting my CMA report for me. So behind the scenes, it's now pulling in all the data from the MLS, and it's gonna now allow me to view them, make any changes or notes that I want right to the CMA. So right here, um, I can see the things that it imported from the MLS, but sometimes it's putting your comps in the right order. Um, I remember my first listing appointment, my broker said to me, Colleen, get the price down, get the price down, get the price down. So I went in and had all my low comps front and center, and I almost didn't get to show comp number three because the first two were so low. So sometimes it's moving those comps in the right order. As you can see, it's a drag and drop. So I'm gonna just put those in the order I want them to be in. If you wanna go back in, maybe review that particular comp, maybe you wanna see some photos, just ensuring you grabbed the right comp, you can click on details and adjustments. That will show you all of the MLS photos. And a little trick I learned um, is I used to always put a post-it note on a property. So I would remember to tell them, oh, this one closed for less because it had no garage. As you can see, our subject property, which was just a couple houses down from this home, had an attached garage. So therefore, this is probably going to have closed for less. So I wanna put that note in here. I wanna do uh, closed for less 
due to no garage. So you want to put those notes in there because remember when you're going through them via phone, um, you want to remember to go over all of those notes to remind them, yeah, close for a little less, but here's why. Um, and so it's just a really easy way. If you were going through this information and you realized, oh, I didn't mean to grab that comp, you don't have to start all over again. All you need to do was unselect it and it will remove it uh, right from your report. You can even put a price range. And I do recommend because we're not walking through the home, uh, you can't see all of the detail. It might be a good time to utilize a price range. Maybe we're going to suggest they sell anywhere from 160 to 170 uh, on this home. Um, so you can actually put a price range in here. You can also put a seller's net sheet here. You can put in the items like maybe I want to put in my Michigan transfer tax. Uh, my home warranty costs, things like that. I'm going to be honest, I don't do mine uh, in Cloud CMA. I do them in Transaction Desk because Transaction Desk calculates them for me. So I don't have to do the math behind the scenes or worry about a math error. Um, so I actually take them right from Transaction Desk and I include them in my CMA. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. All right. So this is basically your preview page as the agent. Uh, the whole CMA is just navigated by these four tabs along the top. This, the next tab is how do you want to customize it? So all of us on this call, we have cloud CMA. What makes my cloud CMA different than your cloud CMA? Well, what makes it different is the custom pages that I add in. So let me show you what I mean. One of the questions I always get asked uh, when I am going to meet with a seller or going to talk to a seller in this case is, Colleen, are you going to put my home on Zillow? Are you going to put my home on Realtor.com? Where's my home going to be featured? Where are people going to find my home? How are you going to market me? I got so tired of answering that question that I decided to put it right in my CMA. So what I did is I created this custom page. Um, and all I did was I took the logos from the top sites. I asked my broker how many sites we syndicated to, and he said around 400. So I created this page and I insert it right into uh, my CMA. So every time I do a CMA, I answer that question even before they can ask it. I answer it right up front. Another thing I strongly recommend doing is putting the market stats uh, for properties in your CMA. And here's a, a good example of what that looks like. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, market stats is a, basically it's two clicks. So it's super easy on the agent side, but it's a great way to educate your seller on what's happening in their marketplace. It's so super easy to do, and it's really easy to add into cloud. So let me show you that. Mar uh, where we started our, our demonstration off today was market stats. And that's where those fast stats are located. So if you go back into your toolbox, your resources, and you go to market stats right here. That's where we created our great graph. It's where we did our social media post. This should look familiar to you. Right up here at the top, you'll see fast stats. If I click on fast stats, it basically opens up a county map that says, okay, where do you wanna run stats on? So you could do it for a whole county, by the way, if you wanted, but I just wanna go into Macomb County because I wanna tell this homeowner what's going on in, we'll use Macomb Township. Maybe I wanna show this homeowner, okay, what is the market condition that you're looking at? Should, you, should we price it on the high end of the range, the low end? So let me show you this. I'm gonna open it up full screen so you can see it. Right now in Macomb Township, the inventory of home sales, let's use that, is down 35.2%. So we're down 35% in our home inventory. You can see what it was last year. It wasn't even that much on the market last year, but now look at it. You can see where we are. So what does that do to the average home sale price? Well, supply and demand, right? There's not enough to buy by 35%. So what happens to our sales price? Well, if you look here, our average sales price last year in Macomb Township was 316,000. Look where it is this year, 335,000. So we can see almost a $20,000 increase and in why we're so low in the amount of inventory that we have on the market. Now, what I do is when I'm running these stats, 
I simply save them to my desktop or download and save them and I pull them into cloud because when I can tell a homeowner what's going on, that's great. But when I can show them on paper, that's even better. Remember, the first rule of sales is let's show them. Let's not tell them. Let's actually show them exactly what's going on in their marketplace. So I love fast apps. I think it's a really great way to do that. Um, let me close out some of these windows here too. Let's go back into our CMA here. Bear with me just one moment. I've got a couple of windows open. Um, so having uh, having this in your report just makes it that much easier to explain the market conditions to your seller. And I think I think it's a really easy way to do that. It does break down residential homes versus condos as well. All right, the next thing I include is that BSNA record. So if I click on this little preview here, you can see I've actually included the BSNA record, which shows where I got their square footage. I like to do this because especially right now when we're doing hey, Colleen. this. Uh, yes. Uh, we just got a really good question. How do you how do you put the fast stats into the CMA? And how do you attach how do you attach there's another one for how do you attach the market stats within the CMA? Good question. So all of these outside pieces are added um, right through your custom pages. So let me show you that. Really good question and perfect timing, by the way. Thank you, Chris. Um, if you go under the custom pages section, this is all the custom pages that I've added in. You could do your resume, your marketing plan, your um, BSNA report, your condition of the property, which we'll talk about. Um, and to do that, you go over to your, the same place we use for lead generation, over to your profile or where your avatar is or your photo. If you click underneath there, you will see custom pages. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. The custom pages gives you a few options. One, they have some custom pages that they already created for you. So you could go in and you could simply click the pencil icon and you could edit your custom page um, and simply copy and paste. So I just went to our website and I actually copied and pasted this in. It took about 10 seconds. Um, you could create your own marketing plan, your own resume. You could put client testimonials in here. All these are already created. All you have to do is simply click on the pen icon um, or create your own name for your custom page. You can do that too. If you scroll down a little further, and here's what I'm a fan of doing, um, if you are with a brokerage that maybe has some great marketing pieces and you just wanna pull those in, or as I mentioned, here's my um, net sheet from Transaction Desk. Um, if I just wanna pull those in, where you would pull in your market stats, where you would pull your BSNA record, just scroll down to the bottom of the page, click Upload PDF, and then it's just gonna ask you where, so I save my market stats to my desktop. I also save the um, BSNA record and the Realist record, and then I click Upload, and I simply pull that right in. So this one happens to be my Realist record. I'm gonna click Upload, and you can see that quick, I actually added in the Realist record for a property. So really, really not hard. Um, the hardest part is just saving it to your desktop, and then pulling it into the cloud program. Did that real answer? Real quick, Colleen. Yes. Uh, um, Debbie wanted to mention we do have a cheat sheet, um, Cloud CMA adding PDFs. So if anybody needs that information after we're done, they can go back and take a look at the cheat sheets. Awesome, thank you. Debbie's done a great job of writing cheat sheets on almost all of our products. Um, and what we did is we took the long, lengthy cheat sheets that we got from technology companies uh, and what we, we made readers digest versions because we found that, you know, you call Instanet and the people answering the phone generally have not sold a home in their life. So we actually put it in, we call it agent speak. So it's a little easier to read. We put big arrows where they can click and Debbie's uh, done a great job of making sure we had handouts for each each item. All right, so another another trick um, that I recently had to use, I had uh, an out of state investor and um, he had never been to the property he was actually asking me to list. So I got to this property, happened to be in Warren. Unfortunately, it was tagged by the city. 
Um, it needed a tremendous amount of work. There had been renters in there and I wanted to include that in my CMA. So what I did is I went to the property and I took the photos that you're seeing right here. I actually took interior and exterior photos and I added those into my CMA. So I put them in my custom pages. So when I was explaining why we weren't gonna get the average sales price, instead of telling him why, I actually showed him. I actually had photos of the interior of the home so he could see the condition, the holes in the walls, the carpeting was a mess. And I could actually go through that with him. So when we were talking about why we should be on the low end of that price range, because remember, I'm not with him. I'm having this conversation over the phone. I could actually show him the detailed property photos and it helped us get the price. I'm happy to say we sold it very quickly because we got the price right because you could see that it was in pretty poor condition. All right, so very, very good questions about adding in those custom pages. Let me go back into our CMA now. And Cloud does so much, so I do recommend taking that. You can do property flyers, you can do um, actual property reports. Um, they got a, just a tremendous amount of things that you can actually do. Um, but let's go back into the CMA that we were just working in here. You can make your CMA as detailed or as trimmed down as you want. Now, I am not a big, um, I don't have what I call my 20 pages of greatness. Some agents, they have like 19 pages of testimonials and who they are and the six different boards around it. That's you. That's great. You can make your CMA long and put all of that in there. If you're a little more like me and you're kind of a meat and potatoes girl, you can make it very simple. Here's how I'm going to sell your home and here are the comps and this is what I think we should sell it for. So you can make it as detailed as you want or you can trim it down to be just the you know meat and potatoes like I mentioned. There are some great pre-written marketing pieces. Um, here is one that I do use. I don't use very many, but I do use this one, especially right now, because when you're gonna tell a seller, especially over the phone, um, what the commission is going to be, they, in their head, most sellers think, oh my God, the commission is gonna be X. This agent must be rolling in dough. They don't always understand that there's the buy side, the list side, how does it get uh, broken down? So I do use this graph and that kind of gives them a better understanding and I actually go through it over the phone with them. Um, so there's some great pre-written marketing pieces that you can use. If you choose not to, you can always just hit the minus button and it will take it right out of your report. All of your custom pages and all of your uh, pages that you can include are located right over here to the right. And so if there's a particular page that you wanted to use, you just click on the plus and it would pull it in for you. Last but not least is uh, publishing your report. Um, once you publish your report, it takes about 30 seconds and then your report is generated. The question is now, how do you wanna show the seller the report? Now, um, if you have an engineer uh, that is your seller, you probably wanna do the lengthy report with all of the details and the breakdowns and the grids, and that's great. If you have a seller who you wanna make it just easier for, you may wanna do the interactive report. So let me show you the difference. So if I go to uh, my PDF here for, that I just did for a home that's hitting the market next week, um, I'm gonna click on the PDF view. This is what it's going to look like. Um, it's got my information down below. Uh, we've got the map of where the comparables are. You can include if you want it to be broken down this way. Here's that internet sites where we're gonna feature the home. Here's the stats that I showed you, the fast stats, the BSNA record, the real list record. So I've also included the previous property sale. I actually sold them this home uh, a few years ago. So I was able to pull that up. And then the comparables. So this is what their house is obviously going to compare to and what the days on market are, uh, what it's sold for, if there were uh, concessions, all of that is going to be listed here. Um, now, if you have a seller who you think that's kind of a lot of information for us to go over you know, on the phone, you may wanna do something even easier for them. Cloud has an interactive presentation. Uh, let me pick a good one for that one. Uh, let's use, let's see, oh, I'm gonna use this one again. I'm gonna use the slideshow or interactive presentation. So basically the slideshow is really interactive. You're sending them a link, but let me show you what they see. They see a very streamlined version. So when I email the link, you're gonna go to these little dots and you're gonna email the slideshow link. 
And this is what it looks like on their end. And I know you can't see me, I apologize, but um, I'm literally swiping my way through. They can click or they can swipe. They will get that overhead shot. They'll get you know information about this. As you can see, it's, it's loading up everything here. And this link is not only gonna give them the comparables, but those marketing pages that I've added, information about me, and I'm just gonna slide over here. If the homeowner says, well, Colleen, I have a finished basement. Just Joe Schmageggy over there, does he have a finished basement? They can click right on Joe Schmageggy's house. It's actually pulling up that home. It's going to tell them some basic details to the left and right. If they click or swipe down, they can now go through the photos of that home. They can blow them up um, and they literally can kind of compare that comparable to their home um, and they can swipe to the next property maybe they want to see what their competition is what's pending when i go down do they have a finished basement uh, how was their kitchen remodel and i literally can swipe my way through here um, so the interactive presentation i think is easier um, for the sellers to digest it's not as much information it blows up those photos front and center so they can kind of see what their competition is going to be um, and again it's just how you think they're going to absorb it the best so now we've talked to our sellers we've got the photos we've done the cma again don't be afraid to include those property photos in your cma um chris do we have a couple questions i saw the question like blink a couple times do you I'm not seeing anything new in chat or on questions. Okay, perfect. Um, so the next step is, great job. You have given them a great CMA. You've told them what they should list for. Now I want to do two things. I want to get the photos uh, because they've decided that they're listing with me. I want to get the photos. I want to get their permission in writing to use them because remember, whoever clicked that camera shutter, that's the person who owns the copyright. And copyright damages, by the way, are triplicate and can be very expensive if you borrow or steal someone else's photos. You don't want to do that. So I want to make sure that I'm getting the photos to use. I'm getting the written permission. And I also want to make sure that I'm now getting all of the listing forms signed. But then there's the questions of, OK, Colleen, what about the seller's disclosures? What about things like that? So I'm going to show you a really easy way to do everything right through Transaction Desk. Um, so when you are, again, going into Paragon, going into Resources, I'm going to go into uh, Instanet Forms, which is Transaction Desk, basically. Instanet Forms is just the name of the forms part of it. And here's what I'm going to see. I'm going to see all of my uh, transactions, but now I want to go up to the Add button. I now want to give my transaction a name. So I'm going to call this 41539 Westville Drive. That was the, and I also um, like to put the homeowner's name. Um, so I do dash the homeowner just so it's a little bit easier to um, find those files. And then under template, this is where you can save yourself the most time. Um, if you're a broker on this call, I highly recommend setting up your listing packets your purchase packets, your lease packets. Um, if you have any questions about doing that so all of your agents can see it, I just walked a broker yesterday through setting up all of their packets. Um, set up those packets so when agents are writing their contracts at home, they don't miss any mandatory or crucial forms that you require. So in this case, I would use my office listing packet. But now I don't want the agent to have to go in and type in 40 additional fields of information. I want those to be filled out or imported from the tax record. So I'm going to go under import data and I'm going to select the real list option. Okay, over to the right. Now, when we created this, um, everyone was all excited that the tech people, the tech people generally are not the ones selling houses. So they said, now all I have to do is put in the tax ID. And I had to explain to the tech people, well, agents don't memorize tax IDs. So how do we get the address to auto populate it? So what you're going to do is you're going to slide over to the right where there's the magnifying glass and you're only going to add three key pieces of information. I promise you, if you add more than three, it probably will give you an error. So just try this. You want to go in and put the county in. You want to put in the street number. 
and the root street name. What I mean is this is Wessel Drive, but you just wanna put in the Wessel. You wanna go down to search the tax data and immediately it will pull up that tax record for you. You're gonna check it off and hit select, okay? Now what you can see is it actually added in that tax ID and because I used my office listing packet, it says, hey, you're using a listing packet, you must be the listing agent. So it's going to put my name in all the places that it asked for listing agent. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. Now, the cool thing about this is if you do that step correctly, about 35 fields of information are gonna be auto-populated for you. That means I don't have to go in and manually key in stuff like the long, lengthy legal description, the township, the tax number, the school district, the year it was built, the, um, uh, all of this information, as you can see here, the subdivision, uh, the zip code, all of that's there for me. All I have to do is now put in what we're gonna list that, put in our listing price. The next thing is if I jump over to step three, you can see the seller of record has now been added. And step four, because my broker set up the listing packet, all the forms that I'm required to use are front and center right here. So the next question always is, well, Colleen, what about the seller's disclosure statement? You don't, I mean, how do I get there? Are they gonna open it via mail? Do I have to wait for that? And the answer is actually your seller's disclosure statement can be sent ahead to your seller in an open format so they can fill it out right online. So when you're sending documents from Transactions Desk, those documents are generally locked PDFs, thankfully, because we don't want our buyer changing our contracts or our seller changing our contracts. But this particular document, only the seller is going to fill out. So I want to send this in an open format so that the seller can go in, they can check it or uncheck it, they can fill out all of the fields. So if they make a mistake, they can uncheck it. And, and refill it out. But I want to send it in that open format. So I'm going to go up to File. And I'm going to send it just via email, nice and straightforward. And again, this would probably be the only form I would really do this with. Um, all the other forms I'm filling out as the agent, uh, but the seller's disclosure statement I'm never filling out as the agent. So I'm going to go ahead and send it. And I'm going to type in their name. I'm going to type in their email address. And then down here is where I'm going to make the change. You could put in a subject line, something like uh, listing documents. This time though, I'm not going to send it as a locked attachment. I'm gonna send it as a link and allow them to edit the forms. Maybe I wanna make sure I get them back before the listing goes live. So maybe I'm gonna give them till the 17th to get them back to me. Once I unlock that form and I hit send, it's going to send it in a fillable format. And by the way, the email comes from you, the agent, because they will have no idea who Transaction Desk is or Instanet, so it's got to come from you, which it does. It will also have your contact information filled in there. Another crucial piece, um, because we're not going into the office any longer, another crucial piece is filling out the data sheet to allow either your admin to make the listing for you or for you to make that listing live. What I mean by that, and I will use, uh, let's see, I think I wanna use this particular example because I think I have this one all filled out for you. Um, I don't wanna have to go in and fill out uh, a bunch of information on a data sheet, drive or deliver the data sheet to someone, and then they have to go in and re-enter all of that information. That's a complete waste of time. So what I do wanna do is I want to fill out my data sheet and I wanna use the upload feature. I think this one has one all filled out for you. I can show you a little quicker. So I've got my data sheet and I filled out all of the required information in red. Now, different brokerages have different policies here. Some brokers do not allow their agents to um, enter a listing into the MLS. So in that case, if I have to put all this information into a data sheet, I don't wanna have to go now and send the data sheet to someone to re-enter all the same info. If my admin is putting the listing in, I can fill it out, hit the upload listing button, and it sends it as a partial into Paragon for my admin to review. Now, you do wanna let your admin know you did that. So, you know, there's no alert that says, hey, admin, um, what you do wanna do is you wanna click the upload listing button, 
you want to call your admin and let them know that your partial is now live in Paragon or is now, I'm sorry, is now in Paragon as a partial listing. And then the admin can go in and add photos or disclosures and make it live for you um, if that's your brokerage policy. Now at my brokerage, um, we're allowed to add in our own listings into the MLS. So what I would do is I would hit this upload listing button as you're seeing here. Then basically behind the scenes, as I mentioned, what's really going on is it's created my listing as a partial under the listing section. So I'm gonna go into partial listings and your admins will kind of see it this way. They'll see all of your names for the agents in the office and they will pick on yours and it will show you show them any partials you've created. But here was my Marshall Lane. I would now open up that listing. And now I would add things like my photos. I would add in um, my tour that maybe my seller took for me, which we're going to talk about next. Um, but this is where you're going to add in all of that information. Um, down, since we're going to go into tours next, and we're right here, let me show you this next. In, in normal circumstances, I and I was unaware of this until very recently, in normal circumstances, you can have four different tours under your listing. So what I mean is you can have a branded tour where you're saying, hi, my name is Colleen DeLang. I work for ABC Brokerage. Let me show you inside my new listing. I can be shaking my uh, client's hand in front of the sign. It can be all branded with your contact information. Then there is the unbranded tour. Now, right now we're asking you to, if your seller's going through the home, we want that to be unbranded. If you have to have a, one tour, make sure you have the unbranded tour because it can't, a lot of these sites that it goes to, it can't contain contact information. So you wanna make sure that where it says virtual tour and video tour, those are always the unbranded tours. Um, the branded tours, when the government's order gets lifted and we can start going into homes again, that's where we're going to add our branded tours. So just think of branded as containing your contact information. When the government order is lifted, you can go there and do a nice little tour of the property. Um, but then the unbranded tour is crucial right now because as the seller's going through that home, um, we want them to obviously do the tour. We want to include that here, um, but we don't want any contact information of any kind that we can go out to all the sites um, and it will not contain your information. All right, so next, let's talk a little bit about those tours. Um, I'm going to use my listing here so you can kind of see it. And by the way, as soon as your admin hits save here, that listing then goes live in the MLS. Um, I'm going to show you an example of the branded and unbranded tours. And again, I have both on this one. This one came down right before the uh, government order went into place. The ones that you will see in the MLS, the video tour and the virtual tour, um, those are going to automatically default to the unbranded tours. And that means that there'll be no contact information. And that's the way you want it. You don't want to send your buyer a home and all of a sudden it's uh, Joe Schmageggy talking about how great he is, right? You want it to make sure that it's unbranded. However, when I'm promoting this, um, there's a couple things I wanna do. I really wanna promote this property, especially right now, and I wanna use the single property website. And if you're not familiar with that, um, it's under resources. If you are with my real source and not one of our vendored MLSs, it will be called list track. Um, and you can also get there uh, right through the quick action icon uh, that you see on my screen right here. There's a little single property website icon. Or again, if you're a My Real Source member, you can go right into list track. Um, this is designed to grab your branded tour, allowing you to advertise yourself. And that's really important right now. Um, a lot of agents I see are sharing their listings from Zillow or sharing them from other places. And the reason I don't wanna do that personally is because I wanna make sure I'm getting that lead back to me. If I'm sharing all my hard work, my photos, my comments, I'm promoting the listing, why would I wanna give it to someone who just bought the zip code? <laughs> 
I want to make sure that that lead comes back to me. So I'm going to use our Marsha here and I'm going to open up that single property website. And by the way, these are all created for you. Once you put your listing into the MLS, this is all done. So you don't have to worry about this. Um, open houses will be advertised here. But if I go to my virtual tour and I click on this button right here, um, that is going to be because I'm advertising me. What I did is I took a tour right from my phone. By the way, I did all of this from my phone. I didn't edit it. Um, I literally did a tour of walking through the property, introduced myself. Hello, everyone. Colleen Delaney with Keller Williams Lakeside. So I actually introduced myself. I did the property tour. So I'm walking through the house. And I'll just kind of give you a real quick version of this here. It does have a gas fireplace. And then just off to the left, we have a full first floor bathroom. Okay, so I'm literally walking them through. Now, when, when your seller's doing this, we don't want any content. They don't even have to narrate it. All we want them to do is kind of walk through uh, with their phone so that we can see the property and we have some tour that they can look at, some tour that people can actually view. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Colleen, what, what, what's the advantage right now? Why would I even put something on the market right now? Why don't I just wait till the whole global pandemic is over? Well, two reasons. One, we don't really know when all of the showings are going to start up again. I don't think it's going to be like someone throwing a switch and every seller's like, yeah, please come traipsing through my house. I don't think it's going to be that way. Um, the second reason, right now, we had such a low inventory amount that buyers had been searching for quite some time. And just, I think it was about 10 days ago, I received an offer myself uh, and it was subject to the buyer being able to walk through the home after the government order was lifted. And as a matter of fact, it went so far as to specify that they would walk through within seven days after the order was lifted. The reason the buyer, when I talked to the agent, had written the contract was because they had been looking for such a long time and nothing had come on the market. My listing hit, like I think it was two days before, uh, uh, was, uh, I think it was listed two days before the government order. So when I got this, they they, they were just like, you know, we love the home, but we don't want to lose it. So th they couldn't walk through at that point any longer. Um, so the the purchase agreement read, uh, but the subject to, so it was like a, almost like a contingency. It was a subject to the buyer being able to walk through the home when the government order is lifted. And um, it, it allowed, it gave a time frame after that they would go through, but it allowed us to look at that and still give the buyer the chance to walk through that home. So if you're worried, if you've got a buyer who's lost out on a lot of homes or has been looking for quite some time and finally this great listing pops up, don't be afraid to check with your broker, get the language he wants you to use, but don't be afraid to write it that way. All right, Dave, did you usually like to chime in right about now? Is there anything you wanna mention about that? About what? About uh, go about um, checking with your broker to uh, you know look at the language of the purchase agreement of the buyer walking through um, you know after the government orders lifted. Anything yes, it's always with? a good idea to check with your broker. But in general, right now uh, people are writing purchase agreements. They're writing them uh, subject to the review and approval by the buyer of a, a inspection, in-person inspection at a, a later time but yeah check with your broker on the, what language he would uh, prefer you to use but uh some type of language like that is being put in purchase agreements and which is why business is still getting done terrific um and then uh if you haven't if you're doing a virtual open house um that oh, wait, can we, also we a, colleen we have a question it okay. says once, once the seller sends the video, how is that downloaded, uploaded? How does it get into uh, where you can then put the link into uh, Paragon? Great question. And I have to tell you, we have an in-depth class about that um, tomorrow, uh, Thursday at 2 p.m. Um, we're going to talk about that. Uh, so it, that was, a, I think that's everybody's question. So now you have this file that your your client went through they've actually given you video or they've given you photos how do you create the link um and i will tell you i had not done it so i was excited when i tested it out it was so easy i went to youtube 
um, and I'll just show you. And again, we're going to go over this step by step um, at, at two o'clock tomorrow in our virtual tour and virtual open house class. Um, what I did is I went to YouTube and it will ask you to set up a, an account. The account is free. It will ask for your first name, your last name, your email address. So I set up my account. And then there is a little button right here where it says upload a video file. And literally that's all you do. You click on that button and you pick, I saved uh, the, the homeowner actually sent me the video file. It wasn't very big, it was a very small file. I had another homeowner who actually just put it in Dropbox because it was a little bit longer. Um, so once you have that file, you're gonna go to upload the video. You're going to click on this uh, or you can drag and drop that video file. So I think I've got one on my desktop I can use. And we'll show you this again in more, a lot more detail when we have a little bit more time uh, tomorrow. Actually, I created one called Joe's Mom. Oh, we'll use that one. Okay, so I'm taking my video file and you can drag and drop it onto there or I'm just gonna double click on it for the sake of time here. And I'm now going to basically create a link right in YouTube. Again, this is totally free. You can see this is going to be the link once the um, video is rendered. Usually doesn't take very long, just a couple of moments. And then you can make it visible uh, just to you. You can make it visible public via the link. Um, and very, very simple. It walks you through its three simple steps. We will go through that in greater detail uh, again tomorrow at two o'clock in our virtual open house and virtual showings. And as you can see, I've done quite a few here. So um, once you've got those links, then again, you're going to go into your listing within Paragon, um, just like you were uh, adding in the listing or if you were maintaining the listing as you're seeing me do here. You're going to go to tours and compensation. That's the area that the tours are located. And you're gonna type in, let's go down there so I can show it to you. So compensation and tours right here. And you're simply gonna, and as you can see, they're YouTube links. I'm just gonna copy and paste the link right into the, the appropriate field. So really good question. It's, I have to be honest, it was even easier than, than I could have ever imagined. Um, the other thing I wanna point out that, that I, I did omit is when you're sending the forms for the listing contracts. Of course, you can send them via AuthentiSign. They can be signed um, electronically. One of the forms you wanna remember to add in is the form that gives you permission to market with someone else's forms. As I mentioned, um, when you are uh, using someone else's photos or a tour someone else provided, they own that. They own the copyright to that. So you want to legally protect yourself because you're about to market those photos. So in your Instanet Forms library, and hopefully most brokers have added this to their listing packet by now, you will see the photo copyright forms. Under that, you will find the alternative broker agent joint ownership form. Let me show you what it looks like. It's a simple one page form, but what it does is it gives you um, joint ownership with the seller to the photos and or videos that they're providing you. So you simply type in uh, the broker or agent name here at the top. And then down below, the seller is going to sign it. One page, very straightforward, and basically what it says is I give you joint ownership to these photos and you can market them. So I put this right in my listing packet, and that way when the homeowner uh, is signing all of their documents, um, they're signing this one as well. So it's just all sent to them at one time, and they can go ahead and sign it, and now I have everything back. All right, um, the next thing that we want to cover is uh, marketing. So as I mentioned, a great way to market your property is to start sharing your single property website, uh, which I showed you. Create that link in YouTube, market it out onto social media. Go ahead and close a few of these so it's not quite so distracting. Um, the next piece, though, is uh, doing open houses. So there's a lot of question about that. Um, I know in our earlier classes, people said, well, if it's vacant, can I just drive there and do an open house? And the answer is no, we cannot go do that right now with the government order in place. But that doesn't mean you can't do a virtual open house from your home. 
Um, and tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow we're going to have a whole lot more information on how to do that. Um, but you can actually go into your listing. Uh, I'm actually going to go into showing time on my listing here to kind of show you. And you can block off a time that people can request a showing and you can actually talk them through the photos. You can talk them through the seller provided tour. I'm going to kind of give you a, a real quick look here and we're, we're going to go into it a lot more tomorrow. But in showing time, what I've done is I've added under my listing, I've added um, some information of when I'm going to be doing this, basically a private tour, if you will. I have blocked off certain times and I have said, okay, from Sunday between 12 and 2, I'm going to, you know, do a virtual open house um, or a virtual tour for a buyer. Think of it kind of that way. Now, uh, Dave, our CEO, he had a great idea. You might want to do a virtual open house in two ways. You might want to block off a certain amount of time so people could come into showing time, the, meaning other agents, and you can host a, let's say, a Zoom call or a go-to meeting, um, and you can connect with that other agent. And you can answer questions about the property. Um, I recently just did this and I actually right on my phone had HomeSnap pulled up and I was able to show the um, area, the subdivision. I did that walkthrough kind of like I showed you in Google. Um, I also pulled up the property photos. I had the tour in there that the seller had sent me. So you can actually schedule time that you're putting that Zoom information into showing time. And how you do that is you can go under your access details, change where your lockbox is, because we obviously don't want anyone going, you know, to show the property right now. I'm going to change it to other. And I'm going to put virtual property showing. Okay. And then down here where it says notes for the showing agent, I'm going to put my call instructions for Zoom. Now, what I've literally just done is I've created a time for that agent to come in with their buyer where I can, you know, help assist with any questions. I can show them the tour. I can show them uh, the property photos. But then I still want to go out and capture buyers for me, the agent. So that's when I would use something like Facebook Live. Um, and I would promote that I'm going to be hosting an open house virtually. And I'm trying to get buyers, Facebook friends to come in and check out this property. So there's still ways and we're going to highlight a whole lot more of this tomorrow um, in the virtual tour and open house class. So please try to join us for that. Anything you want to anything you want to talk about there, Dave, uh, as far as virtual open houses or virtual property showings? Uh, yeah, the big thing is to uh, come, uh, you know, check out that class tomorrow. But uh, the uh, idea of it being uh, a live event, you got to think about that for both uh, showings and for uh, open houses. And I think that what you'll find is even after uh, the governor's order is lifted, there's a high likelihood that uh, there'll still be restrictions on in-person open houses and things like that. So it's a good idea to get used to doing those now uh start by attending the class uh, tomorrow and uh, then uh, once you've attended the class tomorrow i would highly recommend start doing uh, uh these as practice ones do practice ones with uh maybe your house do do practice ones with the people in your office i mean you can't get together but you can get together via a zoom call or things like that you know practice uh, these things so that when you need to do that on uh, one of your listings, you you can do it. Terrific. We've temporarily um, lifted some of the rules as well because um, we want to make it easier for your sellers. So we have temporarily made adjustments to some of the rules and regulations. One of them is the measuring of rooms. Normally, it requires you to put in room measurements. We are not going to ask the sellers to do that. Um, so if you if they want to provide them, that's great. You could put them in. But um, we're not going to force you to put in room measurements when obviously you can't go over and drive there. Dave, do you want to talk about the uh, temporary active no-show memos that went out? 
Sure. Uh, normally, uh, you know, before the uh, pandemic and the uh, governor's order, um, it used to be if it was going to be active in the MLS, that it had to be available for in-person showings. Well, obviously, it can't be uh, now, so we have uh, temporarily suspended that rule. You can now have it active in the MLS, even though there's no uh, in-person showings. Uh, the thing is that we w we still want you to put uh, a video and um, a photo with uh, the labels and descriptions, and please do that. But we do also want you to, in the uh, remarks, in the public remarks, put that uh, there's uh, video and uh, uh, you know photos with uh, descriptions to look at, and in the agent remarks, invite them to write an offer subject to the review and approval of the buyer at a later date. Uh, and then make sure that you uh, put it in uh, showing time so that it's not uh, in showing time as available for an in-person showing. Uh, do what uh, Colleen showed you for the virtual. Uh, and I think you're going to cover more of that in the Thursday class as well, aren't you? Correct. Yes, we'll cover uh, adding how to block out the time, how to put virtual showing links in, um, and we'll also cover uh, doing a virtual open house uh, to get new buyers yourself as the agent and to work with uh, alongside of buyers agents in this difficult time answering their questions too. So we'll cover all of that tomorrow. Um, okay, so congratulations. You promoted the property. You've done a great job. You're now getting an offer. The offer, again, is probably saying something like uh, subject to the buyer walking through uh, when the government order is lifted. Um, the next step is once you've got that offer, what do you do with it? Now we need to counter it. Um, you may not have a printer or scanner at home. How do you get it signed? How do you then slice off the pages and send it to the co-oping agent? How do you make a counter? How do you, what is the process? Because we can't drive it over to someone. Um, so it's very, very simple. Uh, basically, you're going to have your file. So I'm going to use our cuddle file here. I'm in transaction desk. And I'm going to say that someone just sent me an offer excuse me, <laughs> I'm going to say that um, I now need to get the offer, excuse me, I now need to get the offer into Transaction Desk, into the file. So I'm gonna go to the documents, because remember, forms in Transaction Desk are already there. They're the fillable fields in your purchase agreement, in your listing agreement, whatever you're using. But something outside, like a, an offer someone is sending you that maybe they've emailed to you, I got to pull that into Transaction Desk. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the plus in the documents area and you can drag and drop it or you can upload a file. I'm just going to show you very quickly how to drag and drop. It's a little bit easier. So let me minimize a few of these things. I'm going to go ahead and grab, let's say I wanted to pull in, uh, let's pretend this is a purchase agreement right on my desktop here can simply drop it right onto that drag and drop strip and that purchase agreement is now being loaded right in. You can see it's very, very quick and you can actually do up to 20 files at a time and drop them hey, right Colleen. in. Yes. We're not seeing that screen right now. Oh, thank you. All right, let's try that again. All right, do you see me now? Did it catch Yes, I sure do. Yep. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I probably had a lag there. Um, so if I go into my cuddle file, let me do that one more time. So I'm going into my transaction file. I'm gonna pretend that someone has emailed me a purchase agreement. I'm gonna click on this little plus in the documents. Because remember, documents are different than forms. Documents are you're bringing something outside of the normal you know, listing agreement or purchase agreement that you use. And there is a drag and drop strip what I'm going to do, and I just usually like to minimize my screen. I'm going to pretend that, uh, let's pretend that this right here is a purchase agreement. And I'm going to drag it right onto that strip. I'm going to let go, and you can see it's immediately added. So you can add up to 20 files at one time, and now it's part of my documents. Now I want to go in and I want to counter um, that offer. So I am going to use... Good. I'm going to use this one. 
This actually was a real life offer that I recently received and had to do this on, so it's a good one to use. So I've got my offer here, and now I want to counter it. I'm going to pretend that Chris just sent this to me, and he sent it, uh, and he was going to ask for 90,000. My seller says we got to have 92. I can go up to this document markup tools, kind of looks like a little painter's palette. Think of this as your tools for countering an offer and making it look nice and, and making any changes that you need to add. Um, the one is the line tool. Let's say Chris is asking for the um, stove, fridge, washer, and dryer, but my client does not want to leave the stove or fridge. Now, keep in mind, you want to check with your broker on your policy for countering. Um, I was recently teaching at one of our vendor MLSs, and they don't allow any, their, their board policy is that they do not allow any markups on the documents. It has to go on a separate addendum. So check with your broker to find out what your policy is for marking up a contract. But know that these tools are here. If your brokerage, like mine, uh, permits documents to be marked up, our requirements that are the buyers and sellers would have to initial by anything that was changed on the document. But check with your broker to find out what your policy is. If you now need to add a text box, let's say uh, I'm going to counter that 90,000 and we're going to counter it at 92,000, you can use the text box and you can change the font size. Um, and so I'm going to type in 92,000. That's what my client would like. And you can move these anywhere on the contract you need. But you can see if I set this here, it would look very messy. You wouldn't be able to see what that was. So if you right click, you can always change your background from transparent to white. So if I'm doing a counter and I don't want to see all the mess behind it, I can literally just drag that into the appropriate place. You can change the size of the font. You can change, uh, maybe you want to make it bold. Uh, maybe you want to make it larger or smaller to fit into your contract. You can do that right down below. So some great counter offer tools right in here. Um, there's highlighting if you want to point out. Uh, maybe you want to point out that it's subject to the buyer walking through the property after the government's order. You can use the highlight tool and point that out right on the contract. The next thing is, um, I generally, when I'm sending documents, especially on the buy side, I will send out um, the buyer's agency. Uh, we have a contact information sheet at my office. I will send out the purchase agreement, the addendum, and all of that stuff together. But then what happens is I got to now get this over to Chris. And I'm going to pretend for a moment that I don't have a scanner at my house. I don't want to have to print out everything and separate those documents because I don't want Chris to have my buyer's agency agreement. I don't want Chris to have my confidential information, his email and phone number and things like that for my client. Not that I don't trust you, Chris. I just it wouldn't be something I would generally send. So what I want to do is I want to use the document slicer and I want to slice off any pages that I don't want to send to Chris ahead of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that same offer and the document slicer tool is um, it's one of my favorite tools, by the way. Uh, it's up here. It looks like one page with two pages ripped out. When I click on that, what it does is it opens all of the forms or pages um, that I've sent my client. And but now I only want to send maybe page one, two and three over to Chris. So what I want to do is I'm basically making a new PDF. For Chris, I'm going to call this counter for Chris, but just the pages I want him to see. So I'm going to take that, what is it, 11, 10 or 11 page document, and I'm going to save it as, I always like to keep my original intact, so I don't really want to save it. I want to do a save as, so I can call it something new and make a new version of what I want to send to him. And now it's going to take that 11 page document down to three, which I now can email right over to Chris. I'm not showing him any confidential information. I don't have to print it and separate it. I can do it all in one swoop. Okay. Um, all right. EMDs. Now this uh, can vary. Some brokerages have gone to that paperless route of EMD. Some are still uh, accepting checks. Um, so you do want to check with your um, broker on what the policy is. I know some are actually providing a link now to the buyer where the buyer can put in their routing information and confidential information. So um, that 
MD check can be submitted electronically. Some brokers are saying, you know, hey, no, it still needs to be dropped off. So you still want to check with your broker about your policy for EMD. Um, inspections and appraisals. So for a long time, people were saying, hey, are they allowed? Are they not allowed? As Dave mentioned in the beginning of the call, um, inspections and appraisals are still um, considered essential under the government's orders, and those can still take place. However, when it gets to the closing, I have seen everything all over the map. I've seen recently drive up closings. Matter of fact, I'm having a drive up closing this week. I cannot personally attend it. Only my buyers will be attending. Um, there are things from drive up closings to I had one uh, where everyone had to go in a separate room. The pens were actually handed out in disinfected wipes and there was a trash can that was passed around. So you had to deposit your pen in the trash can afterwards so no one else touched it. Um, so it's kind of all over the map and many brokerages have ancillary title companies. Um, so again, that you're gonna have to check with your brokerage on what the policy is. Um, most of the title companies to my knowledge are still uh, doing closings but they are definitely doing them different all across the board. Um, so that kind of brings us to the closing, but there is a couple things I want to mention that we're asking you not to do in this time. We are asking you to do virtual tours of the property, still answer questions, host the virtual open houses, come to the classes tomorrow. Uh, we have a class, as I mentioned, at two o'clock tomorrow on setting up your tours. We're going to show you how to get a link into YouTube, how to, where to put the link, how to advertise it. We're going to show you how to go on to Facebook Live and uh, get new buyers to work with from your virtual open houses. We're going to show you how to break, how to do that unbranded tour that your seller sends. We're going to go over all of that. We're going to even show you some examples, live real life examples that came in from agents saying, hey, I did it. It was easier than I thought. And we're going to show you what their sellers did and some creative ideas that they came up with that, you know, that I thought were outstanding. So we're going to show you those things tomorrow too. Um, but we are asking you not to do a couple of things. Uh, I did see on Facebook that one of the agents said, hey, I'm just going to go to the house. It's vacant and I'm going to do a virtual tour because my buyer has some interest. I'm going to take my phone. I'm going to walk through somebody else's listing and I'm going to video it. We are asking you not to do that. One, you don't have written permission to go through someone else's home um, and video it. Most of us get that written permission through our listing agreements for our own listings. So that means if you are planning on getting in your car and driving over to a property, first you're violating the governor's order, which that is bad. Second of all, you don't wanna do that because you haven't been given written permission to go and do that even after the government order is uh, lifted. Um, remember that if you are going to use another party's photos or videos, you do have to have that written permission form into place. And then lastly, I reminded you about the two o'clock class, but we have also been doing a weekly class called Mixing It Up with My Real Source. Uh, we, we do these, prize, these fun prize baskets. Um, we take good questions. We show you one new thing you're going to need to know or one tip or trick. Um, they're short. They're usually between 30 and 45 minutes. It's going to be tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, we do these really fun prize giveaway baskets. We do trivia questions. Um, but the idea is we want to help you sharpen some of those skills while you're home. So when the government's order is lifted, you can hit the ground running and you'll pick up some new valuable tools. So it's a lot of fun. We keep it kind of lighthearted and upbeat. We'd love to have you join us. So that's tomorrow at 10 a.m., Thursday at 10 a.m. and Ooh. Thursday use that virtual open house. Um, all right, so let's, uh, did I miss anything, gentlemen? Did I miss anything, Dave? Did I miss anything, Chris? No, I think it was good. Yeah, it was all wonderful. Right. All right, well, I am very happy. We do love your feedback. Um, we'd love to hear what you thought about today's class. Again, we're trying to give as much information as we can in this uh, difficult time. Remember, deals are still being done. So please be one of those people who are out there and, you know, pending things, uh, writing offers, taking new listings. Don't be afraid to do that. 
Uh, we would love to hear uh, your feedback of what you thought, but if you thought there was something that you could have needed a little bit more information about, I know we covered a lot and, and we're trying to encourage you to take the full classes too, but if there's something we missed that you thought would be helpful, please shoot us an email about that. Um, you'll get a survey after this class. Tell us kind of what you thought, and if there's anything that we did miss, we look forward to uh, answering those questions. So uh, stay safe. Oh. One thing about the practicing, I just had a thought. So if they're practicing doing all these things, for example, practicing uh, with the uh, getting a listing but staying at, uh, safe at their home and getting a video and things like that, can they practice putting them up in a uh, – a partial listing and you know it's, it's just going to stay in a partial but they can practice putting in a, uh, a link to a, a, a video and things like that absolutely do it as a partial obviously don't make it live but don't be afraid to do that don't be afraid to walk through your house take a video and then and then you know take it to youtube and and upload it or write a transaction on your home send it to yourself for signing you know that is one thing that i didn't cover um, on the left hand side of your page thank you for reminding me on the left hand side of your page is authenticign this is where you want to go ahead and start that signing process um, it will tell you right in your AuthentiSign if it made it to your clients. Um, if it's in your world, you'll see these gears. So if your clients called and they said, hey, Colleen, I never got that, and you see the gears, you know that it didn't make it for some reason to your clients. You missed a step. Um, if you see this lightning bolt, you know it's waiting for your client to sign it. And if you see this blue ribbon, you know it's been completely signed. Um, the hardest part of using AuthentiSign is just remembering to marry the file to what you're sending. So if I am calling these listing docs for Sally Seller or whatever I'm calling them, I want to remember to down below where it says optional, don't think of that as optional. Think of that as mandatory. You want those documents to go right back into your transactional file. Um, so it's four simple steps. The first one is really done for you. It defaults to sign in line, meaning the logical order of real estate. Obviously, I don't want the co-oping agent to get it before my buyer has signed it. So it's going to go in order. Step two is really, who are you sending this to? So uh, do you want them to sign it remotely? Well, yeah, because right now we can't do in-person signings. We're not standing there with them. If there's an attorney, you can use the reviewer role. And lastly, I just got a couple calls on this this week. Um, the CC role is a little different than CCing on an email. Remember, CC roles are set up so it goes automatically to a title company or automatically to a lender once everyone has signed it. It doesn't mean that it goes out you know, automatically when the first person is signing. What it's meant to do is send a copy directly to your title company or lender with your personal instructions if everyone has signed it. Obviously, my title company and my lender, they don't even want to know about it unless it's a real deal. So I don't want to send it ahead of time. I want to send it after everyone signed it. Um, then just what forms are you going to send? By the way, um, this will automatically pull in your filled out seller's disclosure and lead-based paint if the agent has added it. Um, into uh, Paragon. So if the agent added a bank addendum, if an agent added, um, let's say, a condominium rider or a seller's disclosure or lead-based paint, those will be pulled in here into your transaction. And if you want to send those for signature, they'll be right with all of your other forms. And then lastly is just setting up where you want your clients to sign them. Um, it's a simple drag and drop. Um, you're just going to grab the um, drag and drop option and you're going to put the signatures where you want them to be placed. Uh, brokers, you can even set this ahead um, so you can actually have where the buyers and sellers are supposed to sign for the agents, making it a little easier. Um, in the class for AuthentiSign, we show you all the additional cool things you can do like radio buttons. Um, if a client has to choose whether they're going to have a home inspection or whether they're not, um, you can actually use these radio buttons that you're seeing here that they will have to choose, yes or no. You don't want to make it optional because then they could check them both and now you've got an invalid contract. So what we want to do is we'll show you all these little time-saving tips and techniques going forward. And then lastly, you hit next and send invitation and your clients are ready to sign. So not a hard process. Again, that's covered in the Instanet and um, AuthentiSign class, uh, and that is via webinar too. All right, any last questions, guys? 
I'm looking. No, I don't think so. All right. Well, stay safe, everybody. We look forward to seeing you again in our classroom, uh, hopefully soon when the government order is uh, lifted. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye, everybody.